everyone raises their kids based on the values that they have and no one really bats an eye um, except when it comes to veganism. <laughs> There's so many things that we decide for kids. Um, and then as they get older, you can help them guide them and be there for them to figure out like what suits them best and and um, let them decide for many different types of things. Welcome back to my show. I'm so excited today to have Ellen Fisher on, somebody who I've followed for a really long time. And I think not just me, I think a lot of people look at your life and they're like, that's a dream. Like, I want to do that. Um, you're a podcaster, a content creator. You've shared a lot of stuff around like vegan lifestyle, vegan parenting, living in Hawaii, you know, like I said, the dream. Um, so welcome. I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you. I mean, thanks. That's so nice of you to say. I really am thankful for the life that we've built and, you know, all the work that we did with, with these goals in mind. And I really am thankful every day, like every day for the life that we have for sure. Yeah. So I think it would be fun to just start with a little bit of like, how did you get there? Because I, I, I want to talk about vegan parenting and vegan preg pregnancy, because those are questions that I have people ask me all the time, you know, being in the fitness space, people are always like, is it okay to be vegan while you're pregnant and all of these things. But before we even get there, like, what was your journey like to getting there? Were you vegan for a long time before or yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. I went plant-based when I was 19. So it's been 15 years now mm -hmm. and it was you know, way before it was cool. Yeah. Like, and hardly anybody even knew like really what vegan meant. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I originally had told my then boyfriend, who's now my husband and father of our children, we had been dating since we were 15 and 16. So like we had already been dating for a few years before I went mm -hmm. vegan. And one day I came to him like, babe, I'm going to go vegan. And he's like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? And he's like, so no milk or eggs? I'm like, nope, nope. And he's like, well, I'm not going to do that. Don't ever expect me to do that. I was like, that's fine. I'm just on my own journey because at that point it was really just about like health for me. So yeah. I really didn't care what anyone else was eating. Um, and then that's kind of when my journey began. I just went plant-based overnight. And over the next few years, he saw like my health, getting, me getting my health back and feeling so great. And, you know, he'd be eating at like In-N-Out Burger mm -hmm. and I'd have this giant gorgeous salad and I'd feel so good afterwards. And he would just be like, Ugh, like a little sluggish. Yeah. So then he's like, okay, maybe she's onto something. And he started to like make more like stuff on his own, mm -hmm. more fresh food. He started to add vegetables to smoothies and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um. And then eventually he, you know, went vegan as well. And then I had watched, you know, The Best Speech You'll Ever Hear by Gary Roski mm -hmm. a long, long time ago. Yeah. And that's when, like, it clicked for me, like, the ethical component that I had never considered the animals before. And mm -hmm. I was just sobbing by the end of the video. Like, I can't believe I never considered the animals. Like, mm -hmm. I almost, like – laughed in a way because I grew up, you know, eating steak with my dad and it being like a cool, almost like a cool thing to mm -hmm. like steak, you know, and if you didn't eat meat, then you weren't cool. It was just like, I don't know. It was just a weird yeah. social structure that I had in my brain. And so, and I was never like a huge animal lover either. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I, I was kind to them. I wanted them to be treated kindly, but I was never like a, just obsessed with animals like some people are. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's when like it just that video shook me to my core, like, wow, I cannot believe I had never considered them before. So mm -hmm. that's when that's just kind of when that component took took off. And so when I got pregnant um with my first, Elvis, it was a no-brainer for me because I'd already been so healthy, doing so well eating plant-based for how many years, I guess? Maybe five, wait, four years. I can't remember the exact yeah. amount of years, four years, five years. Um, but it was it was one of those things where like the proof was in the pudding for me. Like I felt amazing and I, I was so thankful for my health. And mm -hmm. it was just so obvious to me, like fruits and vegetables, plants, whole foods, um, forks over knives. That documentary had come out re recently around that time, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and even though I didn't have a ton of support from like everyone around me in that way, it just was like intuitively, I just knew that this is what my body needed. Yeah. Cause it, and it feels good. And when you yeah. follow what feels good, your body responds. Yeah. And so you, you were following essentially your intuition when it came to what you were eating and how you were nourishing your body. And then how did that 
um, turn into you sharing your lifestyle, which then became, you know, sharing, you know, being a, being a mom and, and, and vegan pregnancy and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we moved to Hawaii when our son was, our first son was one years old and it, I had Instagram at the time. I mean, I've been on Instagram since way before it was even like a people using it as the tool that they use now. It was just like <laughs> literally using it for the filters, you know, like those built in filters. I remember, yeah. I remember, <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah. I, ha- I had it at that time too. Yeah. Like I'm the original Ellen Fisher on Instagram. Like that's a really common name and there's no like <laughs> ones or dots or dashes or anything like that. So yeah. like I got on it. The, in the very, very start. And I was just posting pictures of, you know, our life in Hawaii and the food that we were eating and all the fresh fruits and vegetables we were eating and just like the life that we were living. And it, I just like an audience just started happening. It just started growing. And I didn't really know why. I was just like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. And it was, there was really no intention behind it to use it as like a career or a job, like at all, or to even to have a message. It was just like me sharing my life was really all it was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And my husband was working 60 hours a week at um, a zipline tour guide place. He was a tour guide for a zipline company and also was like a grocery manager at a health food store down the street from our house where mm-hmm. we lived before, lived when we first moved there. And so I had no intention of going back to work. I didn't want to be a waitress anymore. I was a server. I actually used to be a server at like a steakhouse, um, mm-hmm. Fleming Steakhouse. I don't know, oh, you know? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was a server there before I had watched that video um, with by Gary Roski. And, <laughs> and, and I'm like, whoa, I watched it and I'm still a server there. I'm like, what the heck do I do now? Even though we were, we were about to quit and move to Maui. Yeah. Anyways, that's besides the point. But so that's when I started um, just sharing more about it and realizing like, oh, I can do something with this. A lot of people are asking questions. They wanted to see the foods that we were feeding like ourselves and our kids mm-hmm. or my ki- one kid at the time. And so I was just started showing the foods we were eating and sharing recipes. And that's kind of where it began. Yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, it's really a testament to showing that you know, I I kind of talked about this in the episode I just recorded with my friend Lauren, we were talking about like, kind of like following that, like soul's calling is just like your intuitive knowing of like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what feels good. And I'm just going to do it. And you start doing that. Like, it feels really good to be passionate and excited about food and my family and just documenting my life because it's cool and I'm having fun doing it. And then without the expectation of it turning into something, but then it did turn into something really wonderful, which is cool. It's funny because I remember, you know, it's like as you're saying this and you you mentioned your um your son's Elvis, like I remember seeing baby photos of Elvis like when, on on Instagram, like because whenever I first went vegan, I was like, all right, I got to find vegan people to follow. Yeah. And you were one of the accounts that I followed. And I was like, oh, he's so cute. Little baby named Elvis. Like, cause that's a mem- very memorable name. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, and he lives in Hawaii and my whole like thing, like my whole life. And I was a kid, I was always like, one day I'm going to live in California and then I'm going to go to Hawaii. Like that was my plan always. And like, I still feel strongly that way. Um, but it's just like, kind of like funny to reflect back and be like, oh, I remember that. Um, and so did you experience, you know, cause then you, you went on to have more children and you, and you raised them vegan and you went through your pregnancies vegan. And then did you experience like any pushback from people, whether it be online or maybe like friends or family, because, you know, they're like, oh, you're not getting enough protein or, you know, calcium or things that, you know, you you need to like nourish a, um, an infant. Definitely not from friends and family. All of our friends, um, and family saw like how thriving I was Mm -hmm. and how clear it was that I was clearly doing well and eating really well and seeing the amount of fruits and vegetables I was eating and just seeing how nourished that I, that I was, it was like a no brainer for them. And I have like very accepting family, both on my husband's side and my side. Mm -hmm. Um, as in regards to like people who don't know me, maybe I think maybe the first pregnancy Mm -hmm. that was the case. But once I had already had one and two, and also because I'm just a super confident person, like I just, I'm like, I don't really care what you think. Like I know that this is not only safe, but actually healthier and actually better and so good for my body. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to keep doing this because I know what's good for me and my baby that people didn't really end up having, having concerns. I think it, and a lot of it is how you like perceive are perceived by other people, how Mm -hmm. you present yourself, because Mm -hmm. I get um, messages or maybe not as much anymore, but back when I had like one or two or three, when it was still kind of like the unknown, like you said, people get pushed back or like, is that healthy? It's a lot more common now. So people I think are a lot more accepting, especially in certain parts of 
the world in America. Um, maybe not everywhere in America, right? Like mm -hmm. LA is going to be a lot more accepting than like maybe certain middle parts of the US. For sure. Yeah. Um, but many years ago, back when I had just had one or two or maybe even pregnant with a third, I would get messages from moms being like, I get so much pushback from family and from people around me telling me that like I'm, you know, harming my baby or whatever, just fear mongering and mm -hmm. just sharing their opinions, like unsolicited advice. And they're like, what do I do? And I'm like, you need to be confident, mm -hmm. like just show that it doesn't really matter. Like you can, you can listen to what they have to say gracefully and be kind and respectful. I'm not saying to be like a bitch or be mean, right? but like you can also present yourself in a way where you like, if you really feel in your heart that you know this is good for you and you have, you know, your team of healthcare providers, if you have a midwife who supports you or, um, or a doctor, whether you're having a hospital birth or center or home birth, like whoever your healthcare providers are, if they are supporting you mm -hmm. and like being there with you along your pregnancy, like it really does not matter what other naysayers have to say because mm -hmm. you know you're feeling really good. And not only that, you have the healthcare providers there to support you that mm -hmm. also like advocate for you. So you have to like be confident yeah. because people will see that. They can tell if you're like not being confident or if you're easily swayed by other people's opinions. It gives them like ammunition sometimes depending mm -hmm. on the person. Yeah, definitely. And if people see that you're not fully confident in – the way you're living and the way you're feeding yourself and your family, then they're going to say, well, if you, if you don't even believe it, then why should I believe it? That yeah. it's, that it's good. And it really comes down to also, you know, lack of education. A lot of people we're not taught nutrition in the way that we should be when we're like in the basic school system, at least in the United States that I can speak for. And, um, and you know, being like, I'm passionate about nutrition. I studied plant-based nutrition with, you know, Cornell online and, a lot of people like just don't know. You don't know what you don't know, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it's really helpful for people to know that you can take the time to educate yourself and then gain experience. And then through that experience, allow yourself to find confidence in in, in your lifestyle so that you yeah. can be become an advocate for it if that's what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of times it's like just doing research, like you said, so that you can actually like respond to their concerns adequately mm -hmm. and show them like, look, this is, you know, the largest organization of food and nutritional professionals. The American diet, uh, American nutrition and dietetics like agrees that a, um, a well-planned vegan pregnancy is healthy um, and that veganism is healthy for all stages of life when they're well-planned, mm -hmm. um, including pregnancy and childhood. And like you can show that to them and show that kind of information, um, have that available to be able to show people who are concerned, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I wanted to ask you as well, what has the journey been like raising children that are vegan? Because you know, people ask me all the time, like I'm not at a point yet where I'm ready to, to have children. People always ask me, are you going to raise your kids vegan? Because they want to know, like, they're like, I don't, and people will say, oh, that's, and I, and I say yes. And they're like, well, that's, that's not fair. You should let them choose. And I'm like, well, why, if I give them meat, then I'm not letting them choose to be vegan. I know, so, totally. right, right. Like that argument never really makes sense to me, but I get it. A, I get it a lot. Um, and so, uh, my question was, what was that journey like of, you know, raising, raising children vegan and kind of like teaching them that they, the way that they eat is different from the majority of people that they'll meet? Yeah. I mean, just answering even to that one type of question you get a lot, I find so compelling because everyone raises their kids based on the values that they have and no one really bats an eye um, except when it comes to veganism. Right. <laughs> like, you know, religion, um, like different forms, just a spirituality, even just like, the you know, choosing to send your kids to school, like you don't give them a choice which school they go to. Do right. You? Like not often, right? Maybe when they're older, mm -hmm. um, whether they're homeschooling or going to school, like so they're there's so many things that we decide for kids. Um, and then as they get older, you can help them guide them and be there for them to figure out like what suits them best and, and, um, let them decide for many different types of things, right? It really depends mm -hmm. on their stage of development. Like, yeah. you, like we decide to change their diaper. We don't ask them, can you change your diaper? <laughs> can yeah. I change your diaper? Like there's so many things that we do because we know what's best for them, right? Yeah. In the beginning. And that's not to say that like, oh, we have all the answers and they don't have the answers because I really, really believe in this like connected parenting, parent-child relationship where like, mm -hmm. you know, letting go of the ego and realizing that like we actually learn probably more from them than they learn from us. Yeah. Or maybe it's like equal. I don't really know, but it's like very humbling to realize that like you're not this like, oh, I have all the answers and, you know, don't yeah. really have any input that are, that's of value because largely it's the opposite because they're like mirrors for us that reflect back to us what we need to learn and mm -hmm. 
like there's so much value there. But just saying the the factor of like let them choose is fascinating because like you said, if you just, you know, gave them animal foods, a lot of times, actually most of the time in the state of the world that we're in now, in the Western world, like children don't even know what they're eating. Like they, mm-hmm. if, and if they knew what they were eating, a lot of times they wouldn't eat it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, because they're deeply empathetic. You know, yes, because children from a, like we children love animals from their time they're born. This is Earthling Ed did this video recently that was so on point about how kids naturally love animals, all animals. It isn't until we teach them otherwise that certain animals are worth protecting and others aren't. And that's mm-hmm. something that they learn from adults. Yeah. So like their intuitive guide tells them generally to be gentle. And some kids are going to be more rough than others. But mm-hmm. what's really interesting – sorry, I'm not really answering your question. but <laughs> No, you're good. You're good. This is good. <laughs> what's really interesting is how if you look at someone who does advocate for eating animal foods um, – but then when, they're, when their child is near other animals, you, you, they're teaching their child to be kind to the animals that are in front of them. Mm-hmm. Like, be gentle to the cat. Oh, don't pull the kitty's tail. Be so nice to the doggy. Oh, pick up the little ducky. Very careful. Little chick, right? Because you, you know that we're supposed to be careful and gentle and, and protectors of animals. Mm-hmm. And you even want to teach your child that because you would – even if you eat animal foods, you yeah. still want to teach them, well, we don't eat these ones, right? Yeah. <laughs> so these ones we're going to be nice to. So it's a little bit contradictory to me me because um like the fact that most families are like hiding what actually the process is for how the animal ends up on their plate this Mm -hmm. isn't always obviously there's going to be people who are like i'm a hunter and my kids you know i take my kids hunting yeah the kids go hunting and yeah yeah, but it's a small amount of people very small percent most people are not doing that um and i have an experience where you know a friend of ours had had like a, a pig a pet pig Mm-hmm. And um, and one day she was eating sausage and I was like, do you know what animal you're eating? And she's older. She was like 10. And I'm like, or maybe she was nine. And she's like, um, a bird. I was like, no, it's a pig. And she was like, oh, like, cause she has a pig. She loves her pig. You yeah. Know? And she just like pushed the plate away from her. So all those types of experiences kind of, to me, that statement or that question that you get a lot doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. But so the, my experience has been just, it's been so easy. Like we just, your children see, look up to you and they see their mom and their dad or their partner, their parents and whoever they are, or single parent or whatever, um, how they eat and you're modeling that example to them. Mm-hmm. And they naturally love the food that you're eating, especially if you're making good, nu- good food that tastes good and is nutritious. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to social parameters, um, that's another factor that's like just the modeling goes the longest way. So if you're showing that like, hey, look, my love for someone else doesn't change based on the way that they're eating, mm-hmm. then that's how they're going to act too, mm-hmm. you know? But if they see you, I don't know, talking negatively behind someone's back about that or like just like not encouraging friendships in that way, then they're more likely to do that. Right. You know, and someone who's not vegan might be listening to be like, who would do that? That's ridiculous. But there are some people that really feel strongly about things in such a way, not just veganism, but religion or anything that yeah. they don't want to be around someone who doesn't like have the same, have the same values yeah. or opinions. Yeah. But that's not how we raise our kids. Like we raise our kids, like everyone's going to have different opinions on things. And this is just what I, how I feel, what I believe. And I try not to even say, this is what we believe. I try mm-hmm. to say, this is what I believe. This is what your dad feels. And like, as you, you're getting older, like you're going to have to decide for yourself, like mm-hmm. as you're going out, like what you choose. Yeah. And so I found that like when they're really young, it's like one of those things that's so easy. We just, if we're going to like a party or an event where it's not going to be like a lot of vegan options or something, then we'll just bring another vegan treat that's like, I'll call ahead sometimes and be like, oh, what's the type of dessert you're serving? So I can go make or buy a vegan version of that and bring Mm -hmm. it so that they have one that like looks really similar. Mm -hmm. Or even can I bring a vegan platter of dessert so that you can I can share it with all the kids right. too, and mm-hmm. just offer to help in that way. Um, that way, like your kids are eating what like other kids are eating as well. If you're sharing that dessert, um, and then as I've gotten older, I've just found at least my experience. This isn't every experience because I definitely have friends with kids who don't have the same conviction or feeling as they got older with different personalities and just how right. they're navigating life. But with my kids, like they're very appreciative that I go out of my way to get like special food mm-hmm. to bring to a party that's vegan. So like my son, my oldest son, Elvis was having a baseball game and one of the kids was having a party, a birthday party afterwards. And we definitely knew it wasn't going to be anywhere close to vegan. It was going to be like very standard, like pizza hut, like fried chicken, all that type of stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, Elvis, do you want me to like go during the game, run to the store and grab like your favorite 
favorite food. Like you want me to get like, he loves like tofu spring rolls and he loves um, these like taro burgers, which is like kalo. It's traditional Hawaiian um, plants that can be made into a burger mm-hmm. from the health food store and like a cupcake that you can get like a vegan cupcake. He's like, that would be so awesome. So I went and just grabbed all his favorite food, mm-hmm. brought it to the party, um, or gave it to him to take to the party. And when he came back, he's like, mom, that was so amazing. The food was so good. Thank you so much for getting that. The other food didn't even look good. Like my food just looked so much better and tasted mm-hmm. better. And he was just yeah, so it's appreciative. Like a, it's such a perspective thing, right? Yeah. Because I think that um, everything is perspective, right? Because a, a kid could say, oh, well, my food is like, my food is different from everybody. Yeah. Like, why am I different? I'm an outsider. Like, I'm I'm not included, right? But then there's another way of looking at it, which sounds like how your son looks at it is, well, my food is special. It's, mm-hmm. it's special because my mom went out of her way to get me this food. It's my favorite food. I know it's healthy. I know it makes me feel good. And then compared to the food that everyone else has, it just doesn't look like stuff that I want. So it's really a perspective thing. Yeah. And it really depends on the kid because actually some of his best friends who are, their family is plant-based, maybe not like in the same, like as ethical way as we are, but their family eats like plant-based. But when their kids are out at parties, their kids don't really feel like eating the vegan stuff, even if we brought it for them. Yeah. Um, So that's their choice. And he's just kind of like, he knows he's like, oh, that's how they feel. But this is how I feel. Like I want to eat vegan. Yeah. So, and also just the factor of being different. Like we've had conversations about that and I'll explain, you know, when I was growing up, I was so different. I was so not the cool kid at all. I tried so hard to like make friends. I like got made fun of because I was almost like too nice. Like I was just like, hey, you want to be my friend? And like, you know, in that middle elementary school stage where people are trying to be cool, they're like, no, (laughs) I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. So I would just like share stories of like how my, I would go home crying and then my mom would tell me, you know what? Like it's, cool to be different like that Mm -hmm. and like affirm me in that way and make me realize that like if someone was making fun of me for doing something different then that's just something that they're going through and it doesn't actually have anything to do with you and he's like okay yeah that makes so much sense so Mm -hmm. I think it just really depends on each kid and you have to navigate it differently depending on each kid yeah definitely like teaching them like those like deeper core values yeah you know of uh instead of just you know I think it's really in, I I love like parenting stuff even though I don't have kids yet but like I love watching like parenting stuff on TikTok and stuff because I find it just so fascinating like the different ways that you can you can show them and you can teach them how to love themselves it can completely change the whole course of their life and like yeah. you know we, we know as adults, like, oh, I wish that I would have had this experience or my parents were really hard on me or they didn't, you know, allow me to feel like included in this thing or whatever. We have all these different situations and like we don't have to repeat that. Like we can create new patterns for, you know, the next generation of children. And I think with veganism, you know, something that I've thought about, because of course, you know, my partner, Nimai, is, is vegan. He was raised lacto-vegetarian, so he's never eaten meat before. Mm-hmm. And so he's really familiar with growing up being the, like, kid that was the only one with, you know, a cheese pizza when everybody else had meat and stuff like that. And he's, like, really familiar with that. And we always talk about, like, when we have kids, like, how are we going to navigate that? And it's, you know, I, I think about it all the time and I always think of like, I really want to teach them like core ethical values and like values of like being confident in themselves. And, 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 and if they choose to make different decisions as they get older, then that's their own choice. And like, I'll support them and love them, of course. But, you know, like Nimai told me that when he was little, you know, he lived on a cow farm. And so immediately, like since he was a baby, his mom was like, these are cows. Other people eat cows. We don't eat cows though. And he was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I like cows. So then when his friends would be like, oh, I dare you to eat a, take a bite of this burger. He'd be like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to eat a cow. Yeah. So he had that like understanding of like where meat came from. And like you said, a lot of, a lot of us, not just children, adults, like we like don't know what they're eating. And that was kind of my situation. I was kind of blindly like eating meat my whole life. And then I had this moment where I had gotten a dog and he was a puppy, he was a Pomeranian. And I looked at my dog as I was cooking chicken and I was like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense because for all I know, this could be dog meat or like, like what's the difference, you know? And like when it, when it clicked for me, I realized how disconnected I had been from my food and where my food was coming from. There's a a quote that says, I think it's a Yoko Ono quote. And she says, if, um, 
uh, factory farms had glass walls, everybody would be vegetarian. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the that's like the biggest factor with kids and um, where not knowing the food that they're eating because they truly if if everyone had to when they picked up the meat if they had to like watch a slaughterhouse footage video whether that was grass fed free range anything because those labels are very comforting for people that make you feel like oh well the cow had a nice life right but if you just had to see like even just how the cow died like most people wouldn't want to support that mm-hmm. right like it's just it's we're so disconnected from our food and especially as kids like children love animals like you said and so a lot of that is really just teaching the values and ethics that like both my husband and I have and be like look this is especially when they're getting to that age where they're like their emotional intelligence and everything and they're, they can make more decisions for themselves it's like mm-hmm. this is up to you and you're gonna have to decide what you want to do like when you're out of the house and with your friends or whatever and I think just like giving kids that power like empowering them is so important and not making it restrictive mm-hmm. and respecting their wholeness that like they're different people than us and they're navigating their littleness trying to figure out who they are you know mm-hmm. and I think that's one of the most like important factors of parenting and like because a lot of times as parents we can get very like we want them to do exactly what we want, right? Mm-hmm. But like a lot of like trauma that children have like in different facets like is from their parents like wanting them to be a certain way. Yeah. Right? So that is such a big part of this conversation too. And like you can share your your feelings and your opinions and really um, just like help your kids get connected to their food. And But at the end of the day, you have to like let go of – like the ego and be like, look, our kid is their, their own people. Yeah. 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 And when you, when you teach them those values, because I know that if I had an understanding of where my food came from when I was younger, I would have chosen to not eat meat. Oh, I totally would too. The reason why I thought it was cool to eat meat was because of the way my dad talked about it, Mm -hmm. not because of anything else. Like I was taught that for some reason, but if I was taught to like be in the garden and be more connected to fruits and vegetables and, you know, the factor, the, just the factor of like where animal foods come from and, you know, that they have feelings too, and they don't want to die just like we don't want to die. You know, they run away from pain, that type of thing. Like if I knew all that, then I, I likely would have been vegan as well. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so I think, you know, when we think about like vegan parenting, again, it's like it's not even like people say like, oh, why would you like force your kid to be vegan or whatever, even though like it doesn't that statement doesn't make sense. It's really not about making your child be vegan. It's about having the intention to teach your children about nutrition, food, animals, compassion, and ethics, Mm -hmm. and then letting them decide. Yes. And it's very likely that when they are taught those values and they have time to really, like, think about it themselves, they're going to make the right decision, Mm -hmm. you know? And if they don't, then, like, that's their own independent journey. Of course, I can't speak for every single child in the world that would have access to that kind of um, information, but it's true. I mean, my my mom told me that when I was three years old, I watched – Bambi and you know Bambi's mom gets shot and and, and I cried yeah and my mom was like why are you crying and I was like Bambi's mom died I was yeah. only three years old we all cried at that movie no one liked that movie that was the worst movie ever yeah like because it's, Bambi's mom died it's so sad like yeah. the whole it, it's really just a sad movie it and, really is but like as a like a child like a child crying because an animal died right it's like having that empathy for like that animal didn't want to die. And now it's baby is alone. It's like, that is real life. Yes. That is real life. Like cows mourn their babies when their babies are taken away from them. Like it is, it is real life. And I think for people to get connected to that, they can then like have such a a better understanding of that. And when children have the opportunity to learn about that from the beginning of their life, I mean, they're going to just have a completely different perspective. And I have an example because I live with someone who was raised that way, Yeah, you know, and he's never been tempted to eat meat. He's never like wondered about it. He's just always been like, why would I want to eat an animal? I don't want to eat animals. And he's not like an animal guy. Like we have two cats, but like, I forced him into becoming a cat person. He would have been happy never – he loves them now. He's yeah. such a cat person. But yeah. he would have been so happy, like, never having pets. Like, he wasn't, like, an animal lover guy with, like, a dog and, like, farm animals. Like, no. He was He was just, like, animals are sentient beings. I don't want to eat them, you know? And that's just, like, proof of how children can evolve when they're – given choices. Yeah. I think you said that so perfectly and especially the way that you explained the the children aspect of like empowering them and then leaving it up to them. Mm-hmm. And most children I think are, would choose to eat eat plants instead of animals. And the ones that are choosing to, like the example I gave earlier, a lot of times it's just peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Or if they didn't start 
eating plant-based, like if they were eating animal foods like when they were younger and then they went plant-based later, it does like add a little layer of complexity to it. Mm -hmm. Like if they were raised at a, to a certain age eating like standard American food or animal foods and then and then they went plant-based, like that can all also add complexities. But a lot mm -hmm. of it is is peer pressure mm -hmm. of, you know, and just when you're little trying to figure out who you are. Um, but I think just the just the factor of the ethics behind it and teaching children the value of all that. Like it's just, it's integral to the way that you raise your kids, right? You're going to, you're going to share what you find valuable. And a lot of that for us is also getting connected to food and nutrition. So like mm -hmm. we teach our kids a lot about like what is going to be like healthier choices versus like, this is going to be not as healthy. We don't need to say like, these are bad foods, yes, right? But just mm -hmm. like, these aren't going to like nourish our body as well. And like, you can notice a difference and just pointing out like when you're eating a lot of that food versus more of these foods and how, and, and explaining like what it does in the body, how these types of foods have a lot of iron or calcium and these things like give you strong bones and these things help you build mm -hmm. muscle and all these things and they're like they get excited and they know so much more about nutrition than the average kid mm -hmm. that they get excited to eat vegetables and pick the fruits and veggies like from the ground and that is just like so cool to me yeah that is, that is so cool and, and like I mentioned before you know we don't get unfortunately the best nutritional education you know in at least in the, in the United States that I can speak for and we have to kind of decide to 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 learn that for ourselves. But I think that part of um, like a responsibility as being a caretaker for a child is to care about that. Because when you're, when you're taking care of a child, like, you know, raising them and you want them to be healthy, like healthy goes beyond just like avoiding them from like breaking their arm, but also like are they thriving? Do they have energy? Is their digestion okay? Like their brain function, all of those things. Um, can be affected with, you know, good nutrition. And I think yeah. it's really valuable for people to take a little bit of time. Um, what was your journey like, like learning about nutrition more, like as you were, you know, you've kind of like followed this intuitive call to like eat more like holy and go vegan. And then, um, did you like, you know, read books or like, what was that journey like? Yeah, I definitely was like getting all the books I could get my hands on. I was working at this health food store called Mother's Market at the time. Mm -hmm. And my husband was also the, became the vitamins manager at that store for a while too. And that's when we were just reading all the books we could get our hands on, like on break time. And that was like, I think before we even had smartphones, definitely before that. So we weren't, we didn't have like Audible or anything of that. We were just reading the physical books we could get our hands on. And there really wasn't that many at the, like at the time. There's like the mm -hmm. Kind Diet by Alicia Silverstone. There were like some raw food books and then like the China study. And then when like um, Forks Over Knives came out, like that type of, all that type of stuff started to grow and um, become more common. But we didn't have like a ton, a ton, but I was just reading whatever I could. That was actually one of the reasons why Andrew decided to go plant-based because he saw how I was thriving, like I said. So he started making more plant foods and then he was like, all right, let's see if I actually need to eat plant-based. Like I'm going to, cause he's such a researcher and he's always like wanting to get to the bottom of things mm -hmm. and like what the truth is, right? Like yeah. not just what like anecdote. So he's like, I'm going to just read all the books, all the nutrition books and see if by the end of it, if like it, it's clear that like plant-based is going to be the healthiest for me long-term. Yeah. And by the end of it, he was like, yeah, I need to, I need to go plant-based. Like it was so clear. Mm -hmm. It was so overwhelmingly clear when you would look at like the science and looking at that aspect instead of like the other books. He was reading all different types of philosophies on nutrition. He read all of it. <laughs> so yeah. that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, people forget oftentimes that we have accessibility to this knowledge, especially now that we have, you know, we can just like search something on our phone. Um, but it's something, you know, as working in like the health and fitness space, when I meet people, um, they always have so many questions about like, I don't know how to eat to be healthy or to lose weight or gain weight or do what I want with my body. And they come to me for help and they're like, help me, like, what do I do? And I'm like, what's your understanding of nutrition? Like the it's really important for people to just get a grounded understanding of what you're eating and food. And I like that you also mentioned earlier, like not like when you're teaching your kids, like not labeling foods as good or bad, but just as like, these are more nutrient dense and these are like a little less nutrient dense. And like, yeah. like learning that terminology is also really important for adults, right? So that we can create healthy relationships with food and we can have balance. Like it's great like to eat all of the fruits and veggies and it's also okay to have chocolate and it's also yeah. okay to have a cookie. Like 
it's more than okay. Like it's allowed. Like it's you. Yes, give yourself permission to like yeah. enjoy food. Like, and it's good. And we'll make healthy versions of cookies. And- exactly. Yeah. And you can make versions that are like more nutrient packed and yeah. stuff as well. And so I always tell people when they come to me and they're like, "Oh, I like I'm not happy with my body. I don't feel good. Like, what do I do?" My first question is always, "Okay, what 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 do you know right now?" And they're yeah. like, "Well, not really anything." And I'm like, yeah. "Okay, well that's where we want to start. We want to start with like arming yourself with like the power of knowledge. But then you can start with Google and you can use, you know, audio books on your phone and you can get books. You can go to a used bookstore and find like the China study or like different, you know, different books, um, like those OG books and stuff that are, that can help like implement more confidence in the nutrition, which kind of circles back to what you were saying in the beginning about like having confident in, confidence in your lifestyle. And part of that is because like you, it's not just like, you know, like through this is my experience. I've been pregnant and I've had kids. I've raised them. I've seen vegans at all ages. I know this, but also I know the facts because I I've take I took a little bit of time, like this much time out of my life to just like sit and read. Yes, absolutely. And the kids have all this nutrition knowledge as well. Like I know when I was in going through puberty and everything and all of a sudden where I could eat everything and anything I wanted and I was like just like this super skinny little girl that could just eat, you know, Doritos and Twix and everything like that. All of a sudden I'm going through puberty and I'm like, wait a second, I feel bloated or Mm -hmm. like I'm gaining weight and I'm like not feeling good. I knew nothing about nutrition. Like I wish that I knew instead of going down this path of like an eating disorder where I was like, okay, I guess I got to restrict my calories. I guess Mm -hmm. I got to just eat less. And okay, I guess I'll eat like 10 almonds for dinner and maybe like a yogurt, like just knowing nothing about it, right? Whereas if we start our children young learning about the power of healthy food and how that's going to help you feel and being tapped into like how you feel in your body, like that's going to do wonders for them as they get older. Yeah, yeah. I I, I like that you mentioned that as well too because having a healthy relationship with food can start – I mean, it it should start early on and with kind of cultivating that um, education on nutrition, it can really make such a big difference as well. Because when it comes to the like epidemic of eating disorders, I also had an eating disorder at a point um, before I went vegan. I kind of went vegan right when I was recovering. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it was really healing for me to be like, wait a minute, I can empower myself with like what is good for my body. Mm -hmm. Right. But Unfortunately, a lot of, you know, young girls and boys, like we, we get influenced by like what our bodies should look like. And, and we look in the mirror and we're like, oh, I don't look like, you know, this, this other person. Okay. I need to lose weight. I don't know how to lose weight. And all I know is that I hear people, you you see like on the cover of magazines, they're like, no carb diet. And you're like, okay, I will stop eating carbs. What are carbs? And then you just like stop eating everything. (laughs) And then that's pretty much like how, how it goes. And then you're like, okay, I lost weight. It's working. And then it's not sustainable. And you get brain fog and you get sick and your relationship with food is damaged and it becomes a whole tornado. It's a horrible cycle. And actually sometimes I've heard that I'm sure you got this comment too, where people will be like, oh, look, like eating disorders. Then you just jump to some, another form of restrictive eating for veganism. And I'm like, no way. Like, like, I think that you're just completely missing the point, especially I think there's different obviously forms of eating disorders. So like, sounds like what you went through was similar to what I went through where I was really just trying to figure out how to feel good Mm -hmm. and how to like look my best. And it was, it was not about like this emotional control where eventually went down that road. Right. And it became Mm -hmm. unhealthy eating habit, um, relationship with food. Yeah. But for a lot of other people, it's not even really about that, like anorexia eating disorder. Um, and then that could be a different type of recovery. But for me, it was literally just like a light bulb. It was like, Oh, I need to eat, for a healthy body, Mm -hmm. not eat for an unhealthily skinny body. Like there's a difference there. (laughs) And once I learned that, that's when it was just like, it was so easy for me and food became this abundant source of like just beauty, not Mm -hmm. like restriction and and like control and less, right? It was more an abundance and beauty. And I did not see it as like, restrictive eating mm-hmm. at all. So it's really how it is for each. Yeah, to- totally. I, I, I've seen that comment before as well. And of course, you know, I think it's important to like honor people wherever they're at on their journey of recovering from an eating disorder. And if any sort of like dietary preference is too much stress, then yeah. it's not like the time for you to do that. But for me as well, you know, I was like, I was really restrictive. And then when I decided to be vegan for ethical reasons, like ethical and environmental reasons, 
you know, I, it was really exciting to be like, okay, I can't eat the way that I was eating before. So how can I eat? And what do I need to learn about nutrition that I don't know? And then you realize how many fruits and vegetables and different types of grains there are and different ways to like do a, like make smoothies and different ways to like, you know, it, just eat like an abundant of of plant foods and you're like I'm eat I eat more variety now than I did when I was eating meat. Way more. When and I also like it was like all of a sudden it was like oh I eat until I'm totally full. I eat in abundance. Whereas before it was like restrict, restrict, restrict. And that's not like it was literally the opposite yeah. of an eating disorder. <laughs> yeah. You know it's funny like me and Nima always have this joke to people that tell us like because we have a lot of friends that are not vegan. Uh -huh. And a lot of times our friends would be like don't you get, guys get bored? Like what do you eat? You know we're like we eat the thousands of varieties of plants. You guys eat the same four dead animals yeah. with a side of broccoli. Seriously. You know, it's like you it's like grilled chicken, grilled salmon, grilled steak, and then fried chicken and like turkey. It's like just the same meats or whatever, right? And versus like all of these different ways that you can that you can make plant foods. It it, it actually was so healing in my eating disorder recovery because I was able to fall in love with food again. Yeah. When before I had kind of, I've demonized food. Same. You know, and I was just like, oh, like food is this bad thing. I can't control myself with food, you know? And um, I did go through a period of like needing to kind of gain weight because my my hormones were like really messed up and I had to like gain weight. And I, I went through that period while I was vegan. And of course, there was like a point where I was like, am I gaining a lot of weight because I went vegan or am I gaining weight because I'm rebalancing my hormones? But I just trusted it because like my intuition was like, this is what's good for me and it feels really healing and I'm falling in love with food again. And then I went through that kind of like rebound. It kind of went like this and then my body like rebalanced. And now it's like I maintain my weight so easily and I effortlessly effortlessly and yeah. I eat whatever I want and yeah. like I walk around with abs 24 7 and like it's and I don't really do crunches like I do I do exercise a lot which contributes to like my, yeah. the way my body looks yeah. but like I don't like I'm not like that person that's like do 100 crunches to get abs it's like no it's like my my abs are like that because I eat an abundant of plant foods and I learned to listen to my body's intuitive like you know, um, nudges, which is like, Hey, we're hungry. Or like, that's too much. I need to slow down. Or like, let's take a break and like fast for a while. So my digestion can like rest. And then it's like, actually, I need to eat a lot today because I'm on my, like, you know, I'm, I'm ovulating and like, I need to eat a little bit more. And like, now I'm like my period starting. So I need to eat even more because my metabolism speeding up. Right. And just like learning to honor that those different like parts of my body and stuff has just completely changed the way my body looks all the time. I have like basically the same experience. <laughs> like I literally like the same the way that you just explained like explained your recovery was like basically the same for me and I just knew in my body even though I was gaining weight cuz I was like you, I literally had trained my body to starve itself. Like I was eating so little calories mm -hmm. when I was like having an eating disorder that once I started eating food again, my body was like, oh, okay, I better hold on to this weight, you know, in case yeah, she starves me again. Yep. But I knew that this was so, I just felt so nourished. I felt so much better. And I knew this was just the right thing. And I kept going and then eventually balanced out. And now like I maintain my weight effortlessly. Like I maintain my optimal weight effortlessly mm -hmm. and I eat until I'm totally full. It's like this abundant, beautiful thing. I love that I get to give that to my kids. Yeah. Too. And then so do you, so so now you're pregnant. Yes. Again. Maybe number five. Maybe number five. Yep. And do you – like how is your eating – so you just follow intuitive eating through pregnancy as well, I assume. I mean, I don't know. Like when I say intuition like I did in the beginning, it was really because there wasn't any other options. Like there wasn't that much to read. Like there wasn't a vegan pregnancy book that I knew of or at least one that I was like, this makes sense to me. Yeah. You know, so I just was like, well, I know I'm eating really healthy. I know I got to eat more. And I took the advice of my midwife and I – um, took that guidance along with like eating more protein and just more calories in general and just being really mindful of that. And, and then took all the other information I knew that was making me feel so good and just kept doing that. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of just what I do. And I just, I'm mindful of certain nutrients, like key nutrients of focus, mm -hmm. um, like iodine and, um, and I eat a lot of hemp seeds. Like for iodine, I, get, I eat a lot of dulse um, throughout my week. And then hemp seeds, flax seeds, all that good stuff. Like just mm -hmm. being mindful of all of that, right? Lots of beans and greens, mm -hmm. fresh fruits and vegetables. And I feel amazing. I love the way I feel when I'm pregnant. I know that's not how everybody is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people talk about how in the first trimester or maybe even into the second, they can't even look at greens or anything. But 
I like just feel so good and I eat so many greens and I yeah, love it. Yeah, it's amazing. And you look great too. Like we like we were say, saying when my, my friend Lauren was here, it's literally just like you have a baby bump, but like your body is so like – like it looks like so fit still. And that's like the ideal, right? It's like, that's what everybody wants. And so I think that it's just a testament to like, not that it's totally okay and more than okay for women to experience whatever their body needs to go through with pregnancy. And like gaining weight during pregnancy is super normal and healthy and, and, and everything. But I think that, um, with that kind of coming back to like, kind of like lack of nutritional uh, education that people have, then you're eating like a standard American diet. And then when you get pregnant and you have all those cravings and then you're like eating like all of this extra like dairy ice cream and like French fries and just like eating whatever you need to do to like fill those, like fill that like, like hunger, you know, like it can lead to just, you know, putting in a lot of calories, which is okay, but then not getting as much nutrients where it's like versus you know, eating very nutrient dense foods and having a different experience. Yeah. Cause your body is not only craving calories, it's ca- craving nutrients. So if you're just like reaching for the French fries and the ice cream and stuff, a lot of times it's like your body's just looking for the most like calorically dense thing it could find, like mm-hmm. hoping for more nutrients. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which is why like, you know, we get yeah. cravings because your body knows when you have a craving, it's because your body's like, Oh, remember that time that we ate peanut butter? It gave me a lot of calories. I need yeah. calories now. Let's yeah. go find something with peanut butter in it. Anything yeah. with peanut butter on it. And like that's how yeah. that's how gravies yeah. start. Yeah, totally. So just being I'm just like very mindful of my body and being like, I gotta, I gotta make sure that I'm, you know, eating sufficient calories, eating in abundance, like getting plenty of greens. And um, I love fresh fruit when I'm pregnant and I just feel really good. So yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I I love I love your whole journey. I'm so excited for, to like watch, you know, your next experience with like bringing another baby into the family and like raising, um, you know, raising them vegan and, um, continuing to do what you do. And I know that you also have a podcast now. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the Ellen Fisher podcast and been having so much fun over there talking about all different kinds of topics that like maybe I never did before, but Mm -hmm. I really wanted to explore. And yeah, just have a lot of fun stuff coming up. And I'm just really loving it. I'm going to have you guys on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> me and Nima will be on the podcast soon. Yes. Um, so I'm excited for that. And then where can everybody find um, everything else that you that you have online? Just um, the Ellen Fisher podcast on YouTube and on like all the listening platforms. And then just Ellen Fisher for like my main YouTube channel, um, which is like more of a family channel. And then also my Instagram, just Ellen Fisher. Amazing. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming here and having this chat today. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be on your podcast soon. Yes. Next next week, actually. Thank you. Yay. Bye, everyone. (laughs) Thank you so much for watching and make sure you hit that subscribe button. As always, sending you love and light. Peace.